the decision to move here was literally made in a snap and life is short, let's move to the beach. sitting on the beach, invited my father from Panama City's best friend out, and we were sitting on the beach, and my father's best friend said, if you have a dream, you need to live it now. He said, I'm 70 years old, and I have no place to go, and no one to go with. And he said, I'm really a lonely, miserable person. And he said, so if you have a dream, live it now. And George and I went back to our home that we rented in Grayton. We called a realtor in Dallas, and we said, do you think you could lease our house for a year? And we thought, well, let's just try it. The first night we went to the Tom Thumb and the Tom Thumb right up here, which that back then it, there were no people here. It was so different. And um, we got a screw top bottle of wine, which this is when it was like Boone's Farm, Strawberry Hill screw top. And we came back and sat on the beach and drank that wine and I said, George, I think we've made a huge mistake. Every afternoon at about three o'clock, I would walk over there from our under construction house and get a Coke and visit with, you know, the owners. And one day, they Betsy and Ernie were their names, and one day I went over there to get a Coke and it was just the day that they had kind of decided they'd had enough. And she was griping about having to work so hard. And I said, well, Betsy, why don't you retire? And she said, well, it's time. Why don't you go talk to Ernie? So I went back to Ernie, back in the store, and I said, Ernie, it's, Betsy said it's time to retire. He said, I've been doing this 15 years, and it's made me a grumpy old man. And I said, well, do you want to sell? And he said, well, maybe. And I said, well, how much do you want? And he thought for a minute, and he threw a number out. And I was like, OK. I thanked him. I went home, got on the word processor. I don't even think you could use the word computer at the time. And I typed up a little one paragraph thing that said, you want to sell this and I want to buy it. Here's a little earnest money check for $5,000. And I took it back to him that afternoon. And he said, you're serious. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious. So I bought that. That's how I bought the market. I just <laughs> went over there one day. Right place, right time. And having no restaurant experience, I just walked in July 1st, saw how busy everything was, and I said, don't anybody do anything, everybody gets a raise, mm -hmm. stay here. Please stay. I have no Please. clue what, what I'm doing. And that was, it was a very steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. uh, the first six weeks, I was literally there probably 16 to 18 hours a day. And I said, guys, let's get 30 burgers on the thing and let's throw 100 shrimp in the fryer and let's go. Sonny, the cook, he looked at me and said, George, he said, the reason they're lined up is because it's good. And he said, and we cook everything to order. Cook everything. Order. He said, if I cook 100 shrimp and put them under the heat lamp and then push them out the window, they're not going to be the same shrimp and people aren't going to line up anymore. He said, there's a reason we do it this way. The best advice that I ever got in the restaurant business was from Ernie. He said, buy it fresh, cook it to order, and serve it with a smile. And I said, well, I think I can do that. We tell it a little bit differently. Well, then you go ahead. No, 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 you tell it. You tell your version. We, we met through some mutual parents' friends. And she moved to Dallas and this other friend, friend of mine that I'd grown up with called me up one day and she said, I have a date for you tonight and you need to be nice and have good manners. She just moved here from Florida and we're all going out to eat Mexican food. So I went and knocked on her door and then we picked her up and about the cutest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> and we went out and had a wonderful time with all of our friends and everything. And she was just getting to know us all. 
we got back to her apartment. And, and it is true. She pulled out the photo album, and here's my puppy, and here's my parents, and here's my boyfriend, and here's another shot of the puppy, and here's another shot of the boyfriend, here's another shot of the boyfriend, here's my parents. And anyway, we, we, we had a wonderful time, and we, we, I said goodnight, and um, then I called her back about a year later. And um, and then we had this date, and he was really cute and darling, and we had a great time. And he didn't call me back, and I, I just thought, well, you know, I kind of thought we had a nice time, and you know, my phone might ring. And those were the days where you know it was pre-cell phones and computers and all, so you would just sit and look at the phone and pray that it would ring, you know, I and it would, be, that. <laughs> it would be be um, your boyfriend or someone you were interested in, you know, just hoping and praying that they would call. And then uh, one afternoon we were out riding around in my convertible, and I think we went to the movie, and I took her back to her uh, apartment. apartment, and uh, got her inside the door, and there was a screen door between us, and I was just like, boy, I sure would like to kiss her. <laughs> and I did. And Anyway. And that's the first time I really kind of felt that. I thought, oh, well, I think maybe if this screen door wasn't here, he might have gone in for the smooch. <laughs> and, it was, and after that, we just kind of started dating again, and then uh, that was history. We don't want to, at the, at the end of the road, we don't want to be people that say, you know, I wish I'd done so and so and so and so. We're going to be the ones that said, you know what, we did it all. Now, here's the ones I wish I hadn't done, yeah. but we just decided we're just... But we kind of lived our bucket list um, on the journey, and and that is a has been a really great thing for us because we really, since we've recently just sold two restaurants and, you know, kind of in a semi-retired state, uh, we're, you know talking about that kind of thing and you know what do we want to do and where do we want to go and what do we want to be when we grow up and we never we don't necessarily know exactly what road we're going down <laughs> but, but it's going to be fun we just tighten up our shoes and <laughs> hitch up our pants and down a new trail we go yeah it doesn't matter that it doesn't matter um you know where you came from or what your name is or what you have or or where you've been it's just a, a just a melting pot of goodness and great people and and that's what i love about 30a is that it's just um i think it, it it's just a great energy force i mean i'm feeling great energy just talking about it right now and i i, I um i really believe that it's just a, a little ecosystem it's it's a place that's beautiful you can reflect you can percolate, which I'm real good at percolating. Mm -hmm. I don't get in a hurry about much of anything. And 30 A's lifestyle uh, suits me to a T. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to live um, and, and to raise kids. It really, really is. And it's been a great blessing for us in our lives.